Hey Drum Bash community, Andy here. Today we're gonna have a look at the most common professional drum pedals. Let's go! Before we get into comparing all those pedals, let's quickly talk about some differences you can find between different models. First up, what's really sticking out with those four is that you have different drives. Here you have a strap drive, double chain, single chain, and here you got a direct link between the pedal and the beater and you got a direct drive. With some pedals you got the chance to switch between belt and chain drive. Now if we go into the comparison we did, um, there's a few things we have to mention before so that you know what I'm talking about. First, going from top down, you got different beaters. So for example here you have a double-sided beater with a rubber side and a felt side. Second is the adjustability of the pedals. So with some pedals you can adjust the beater angle but just the beater angle so the footboard moves with the beater. Some pedals give you the chance to um, adjust them separately and then you got the spring tension that you can adjust. So by adjusting the spring tension you actually manipulate how fast the beater will come back to you after a stroke. Third thing that is very important is the footboard. So just by those four pedals you can see that the surface itself is very different. And with all the models we got back here there's even more differences. Next thing we're going to look at is the price range. In this video we got six companies covered. DW, Mapex, Sonor, Pearl, Tama and Yamaha. And from each company we got two pedals. Just with, with Tama we chose three. And they're basically one in a little cheaper price range and one pretty expensive. Besides the pedal itself, some of the pedals come with some additional accessories like a bag, a case, different beaters or whatever. Now with all that covered, let's begin with DW, the first one in the alphabet. Now the first pedal we're going to look at is the DW5000 series. The DW5000 is a great pedal to start with because it's one of the classics and it's, you can see it on stages all around the world. What's special about the 5000 is that there is actually four versions of it. This one with a single chain and a slightly smaller footboard. It reminds more of the, the older classic pedals. Then you got two versions with double chains, accelerator and turbo versions. They have different cams and with the cam changes how your power is distributed to the beater. And the fourth version is the XF version with a extended footboard. So if you have larger feet or want to play further in the back, this is the pedal you're looking for. Now another special thing about DW pedals is that you got this three-point thingy down here and with them being flexible the pedal can really adjust to all drum sizes that you want to attach your pedal to. Also they're all rubber padded so there's no way that this pedal is gonna damage the rim of your drum. When it comes to adjustability you got the screw here that fixes the pedal on the rim on the side so it's accessible very easy easy to turn. You can adjust the beater angle and footboard but not independently so only one thing you can adjust over here and now this little screw with changing the spring tension it actually locks in place so there's no way that your spring tension changes while you're playing. Let's go on with the second pedal by DW. The DW9000 is a more advanced pedal and also more expensive. What is very special about this one is that you got the spring inside the post. So this protects it from hardware or other things rocking around somewhere out here. But the downside for me is you're playing in here so your foot 
might crash against the spring while playing. Also, this makes adjusting the spring tension even harder because it's very hard to reach the screws down here. Other than that, you got a lot of similarities to the 5000 pedal. You got some rubber plating all the way on the, on the bottom, just as the 5000. Same beater with two sides, rubber felt. The shape of the footboard is actually the same. You also got the XF version with a longer footboard. But what's very different is the cam that really looks like a tank. With this pedal, you got the chance to manipulate the footboard height independently of the beater by moving the chain a little forward with this little screw here. Now what's also special about this pedal is that underneath here is a screw hidden very well that gives you the chance to manipulate the shape of your cam. So if you want it to be more round or more in the direction of the accelerator version of the 5000 pedal. So you can really play around with this one and find the setting that works best for you. So when it comes to adjustability, this pedal wins over the 5000 pedal, but you need to decide if you really want to spend 150 euros more on this one or just get a 5000 that works fine anyway. This pedal also comes with a strap that makes it easy to convert this chain-driven pedal to a belt-driven one. Let's go on with Mapex pedals. The Mapex Armory pedal first sticks out because of the black design with the little green nuances here. What really sticks out with this pedal, even though it's only 150 euros, is that you have the chance to switch the weights in the beater. So it comes with two different weights, one 10 gram, one 20 gram, and by simply switching them that fast, you can totally change the balance of the pedal and how it feels and also how much weight you want to get into the kick drum. Once again, two-sided beater, felt and plastic and you got the basic adjustability of all professional pedals. Once again, as with the 5000, you can not adjust beater angle and footboard height independently, but for a pedal in this price range, that's totally fine. The spring tension screw locks, so once again, no way that you will lose spring tension while playing. And yeah, all in all, a well-built solid pedal for a reasonable price. This pedal is like 100 euros more expensive, lies around 250 euros, and what really sticks out if you compare it to all the other pedals is that it has a very slim design. So if you don't have much space in your setup, you have some stands going on around here, this is a very space-saving option without losing any adjustability or any features. You got a flexible hoop clamp, but the same as with the other Mapex pedal, no rubber plating. And you also got this adjustable beater with the different weights. What's new with this pedal is that you get this little bar with the pedal with some Velcro on it that you can screw down here and paired with the rubber plating and the Velcro, it won't move on your drum rack. One more thing that sets the Falcon apart from the Armory pedal is that you can adjust beater angle and footboard height independently with this little screw here. Let's go on with the next one. The Eliminator by Pearl is definitely the winner when it comes to adjustability options. First up, and maybe the most obvious thing, is that you get three additional cams with the pedal. And how it works is that you can simply slide the one that's on out and push, let's take the blue one, the other one in and just by changing how your power is distributed to the beater you get a completely different pedal. 
so it will feel very different and depending on your playing style or the music you're playing you will have to find out which version works best for you but you have to buy one pedal and you get four different options how cool is that same goes with the beater instead of being a two-sided beater like most others they have a four-sided one two felt two plastic when it comes to adjustability of the footboard and the beater there's no way to adjust them independently but there are so many more adjustment options that this is okay and one more thing you can adjust that you might not think of are those little rubber dots that give you a little more traction on the pedal but if you want to play sliding techniques or you really need to move on the pedal you can remove this plate get those dots out and you have a plain surface one more thing you can adjust is by loosening this screw you can move the heel plate back and forth so either if you want to play a longer pedal remove the toe guard get the heel back and you got a longer pedal over to the front and it's different once again this also changes how your power is distributed to the beater so there is a lot to experiment with with this pedal while the eliminator is trimmed for adjustability the demon drive is all about speed and what's what really sticks out with this pedal is it's the only direct drive pedal in our comparison and it's also the first one with a single post design but even though there's only one post this is a very very sturdy pedal also with both pedals the eliminator and the demon drive you can get additional sets to turn your single pedal into double pedals now what sticks out with this pedal is that you also got the chance to remove this little part back here add it to your footboard and you have a longboard pedal so if you want to play very fast want a longboard like a boutique access pedal or something that's something you can do with this one here also once again you can see those little spots up here you once again can remove this plate and you could change those with for example the rubber dots we had with the eliminator if you want more traction on the pedal due to the direct drive this pedal feels really direct and if you want to play very fast don't need the volume this is great this pedal also has some rubber plating down here the eliminator did not have that and you got lockable spring tension just as with the eliminator let's go on with sonar pedals this sonar pedal is basically about building a not very expensive pedal that works and it has all the adjustment options you need you can adjust the beater angle independently from the footboard you got the spring tension adjustment options here you got rubber plating on the hoop clamp and you got a two-sided beater pretty lightweight and that's also what the pedal feels like it's very easy to play it's just a solid well-built pedal for 130 euros the value you get for the price is very good and if you're looking for a pedal that simply works this is your pedal let's go on with a very different design also by sonar the perfect balance sonar pedal was designed with jojo mayer whom you can also see on the box and it's very special because it has this single post design with a strap drive and what's very unique about this pedal is this folding mechanism you simply fold it just like this and you have this pretty small bag that you can carry with you wherever you go so if you fell in love with this pedal it's very easy to take it everywhere you go also because Jojo is playing a lot of this 
swivel technique stuff. It has a very smooth footboard and there's no ornamentations, no riding whatever on it. So if you want to play with a technique like he does, that's the perfect pedal to do so. It feels really smooth and even though this pedal doesn't really look extraordinary, it has a very usual felt beater, very classic look to it. This is a pedal that works well in almost every musical scenario. The only thing that it's not built for is power. It's more built for speed and also for control and a nice perfect balance. The Tama Iron Cobra pedals have been around for quite some time and have also become a standard for many, many drummers. This one is the 600 and it's the most affordable of the three Tama pedals we want to show you in this video. It's in the same price range as the Sonor 4000 pedal and the Mapex Armor we had before. And it's basically a pedal that works very well, it's well built and if you don't want to spend more money, that's a perfectly fine pedal. One thing that sets this little guy apart from the two we had before in the same price range is that you have this cam that you can turn around to manipulate your playing field a little. While Tama's talking about power glide and rolling glide, here you get kind of best of both worlds because you can switch between the two options. Other than that, it's a very basic pedal. You have no rubber plating down here. You get some rubber down here, but no spikes. And it's just a simple pedal that works. This one is also the only pedal in this comparison where the screw for tightening it on the rim is under the pedal and not that easy to access. With all other pedals you have it on the side or you have this folding mechanism with the zona, but this has the classic way down here and is not that easy to access. The next one is a little more advanced. The Iron Cobra 900 comes in two different options. Power glide and rolling glide. And what's special about these is that you can also get the cams as additional items. So if you got the power glide and at some point you want the switch, you don't have to get a new pedal, you can simply buy the cam. What's also special about this pedal is the beater and the option to loosen this screw and adjust the angle so that your beater hits the drum head properly. Also, what's special about this Iron Cobra pedal is that you get a little spring down here that supports the footboard to get back up and supports the spring over here. You can also adjust the beater angle independently from the footboard and other than that, it's just a very well-built, solid and well-functioning bass drum pedal. While most other pedals come with soft bags, this one comes with a hard case and your pedal will be well protected from whatever happens around it. The Speed Cobra has a lot of similarities with the Iron Cobra 900 that we've just looked at. The beater looks somewhat the same, but here you get a rubber surface instead of a felt surface. Other than that, you got the rolling glide option here instead of the power glide we've just seen. And you've got an extended longer footboard that enables other playing techniques and other playing styles. All in all, like the name says, this pedal is built for speed. So if you're looking for a pedal that does that and you also want the attack of a rubber beater, that's your pedal. This one is kind of the standard pedal by Yamaha and it's just built to work fine. There's not really much flashy design. Smooth footboard will work very well for swivel techniques and other stuff where you have to move around the footboard. There's nothing that will hold you up or tear up your shoes. You have the chance to adjust beater angle and footboard height independently. Other than that, basic spring adjustment that locks. 
You don't have any spikes with this pedal. Rubber plating in the front here. And what's special about those pedals is they come, like the DW9000, they come with a strap so that you can change between chain and strap drive right when it comes out of the box. And even though the design might make you think otherwise, it's a two-sided beater, a plastic and a felt side, and you can simply turn it around without even loosening the beater. Last but not least, the Yamaha FP9C. C stands for chain and you can also get the pedal in a direct drive configuration. With this one, as with the other Yamaha pedal we just had, it comes with a belt so you can simply switch between chain and belt right out of the box. Now with this pedal there are some specialties and let's start with the ones that are pretty obvious. First you got a one-sided black beater and you got some beater weights with it. They just slide down here or held in place by li this little thing. And you can decide if you want to use both, only one or none. And this will really add to your playing feel and you can try around with those and maybe if you want a little more punch, add some weight. If you don't want punch, get rid of those. Now another specialty with this pedal is that you got the spikes in the back. So if you need the spikes to keep the pedal in place, if you're really rocking it forward, those will help you out. One thing that I really like about this pedal is that the spring adjustment is here and you don't have to go down here and it's all messy and when the pedal is set on a bass drum within a drum kit, you don't really get there. It's very easy to adjust the spring tension with this one. And it's also locking, so this mechanism is really nice. Now back to the beater. You can adjust the beater angle independently and you can also work on the cam. By loosening this screw and you can move this little thing to the front and back and change how the chain is connecting the beater and the footboard. So you got a lot of adjustment options with this pedal and everything is accessible very easy. The design of the footboard is also something special because it's very smooth, very close to the Jojo Mayer pedal by Sonor. And if you want to play some techniques where you move on the pedal a lot, no problem with this one. Finding the perfect pedal for you is a very individual thing. Because there's things like your playing technique, the money you want to spend, and also what you're looking for in a pedal. Do you want speed? Do you want versatility? That's all very individual to your own playing. For me, there's pedals like the DW5000 and the Iron Cobra 900 that will just work well. They're kind of the standard pedals you see them everywhere on the all stages of the world and they will work. If you're looking for something a little less pricey, you might want to check out this one and also the Iron Cobra 600. It's a very, very nice value for the price. And then there's pedals like the Demon where you get a very specialized pedal. If you're looking for speed or you're looking for a very well balanced pedal like the Perfect Balance one, Look into those, but those are more special pedals. Now, let us know what pedals are you playing and what is your experience with checking out different pedals. Post this down in the comments and see you in one of the next videos.